Saturday morning here at the Highlands Motorsport Park. A little bit of a damp start, but it certainly hasn't deterred the crowds. Every year we get more and more people coming down for the pit lane walk to see these amazing cars. There's some pretty fantastic cars here and it's good for the fans to be able to come up here and get real close to them, you know, stick their head inside and, and uh, even though the weather's not the great at the moment, we've still got a good turnout. Look, this track's phenomenal and I think that you obviously the local community and the motorsport community come and, and, and just, you know, lap it up and see all these great cars and it's pretty special. It's just cool to be able to provide them with a, another amazing event with um, incredible cars and we've got a lot of fans that love seeing this uh, hot machinery sitting in the lane it's good to have a chat to them and, and provide them with some entertainment. The crowd's fantastic I really like it when you can interact and show them the car they get up close there's no barriers it's just it's really cool for us as drivers. It's going to be a busy weekend I've never driven two cars on the same weekend so we've got a plan I don't touch the Audi until I finish with all my Porsche duties realign the brain and hopefully that all uh, sinks in. We've had the qualifying, had practice, so I got to miles, and now I just want to see what we can do on track. Race one started with an all-star front row. Mies and the Audi versus Little Guy and the McLaren. The 650S got the jump off the line to lead a four-way battle featuring Garth Tander and the sister Jemek Pem Audi and Craig Beard in the AMG GT3. Behind, the title battle raged with Nathan Morecambe and Clark Quinn battling hard. After the pit stops, Quinn took over the lead, which he defended from Morecambe's constant attacks. The pair dueled wheel to wheel into the last lap when the techno driver made a lunge at Quinn off the bridge, resulting in contact. Quinn was stuck in the gravel and Morecambe crossed the line for a controversial first place. I went for a move, seen out of his room, and I don't think Clark actually seen me coming. Um, and he just moved for his normal line and I had momentum that I just couldn't stop. But we had an incident earlier on too where he ran wide and cut back on. But other than that, the car was fast, just hard to park around Highlands Motorsport Park. Following a post-race stewards hearing, Morecambe was excluded from the results, meaning the title fight was effectively reset with both drivers starting at the rear of the field. It also meant that Craig Beard and Michael Arman took the race one win. But it's not the way I really wanted to win. I enjoyed the race of the pit stop. There's obviously a few things going on, and from a driver's point of view, to race with world-class drivers like I was in that first stint, it's just enjoyable, mate, and they're all good, and if you look at the fastest lap from all the pro drivers, they're within a tenth or two, so there's, there's nothing in it. Race two was started with plenty of action, both at the front and behind as Morecambe and Quinn jeweled their way through the field to move up to the top ten within laps. Up front, Michael Arman extended the AMG GT3 legs, leading for Morecambe who made his way up to second, with Barber and Quinn close behind. After the pit stops, Quinn overtook Roger Largo's Lamborghini from the lead and looked to have the box seat. However, with 15 minutes remaining, a safety car was caused by a massive pile-up out of reverse Indy taking the Walkinshaw GT3 Porsche, the BMW M6 GT3 and the Superbahn Audi R8 out of the race. When the race went green, Nathan Antunis took the initiative, passing Quinn at the restart. Soon Beard also made his way past the McLaren, setting up for an epic duel in the final laps between the two. The battle was resolved in Antunis's favour, he and teammate Elliot Barber taking their first win of the year. I did my own race, Elliot gave me the car with awesome tyres, did a good job at the start, put me in a good position, so I just wanted to finish strong and that's what we did. Nice stint at the end was probably the best drive I've seen in a long time, so lots of pressure from Berto, we know how strong Berto is and that Benz has got a fair motor in it, so I don't know if it was more stressful for him or me in the garage, because <laughs> we've been in that sort of position a couple of times this year and just a lot of bad luck from a, you know, starting the race one last today with a screw in the tyre, so yeah, I'm just pumped to finally get a win with me mate. Behind, Quinn drove defensively with Morkin, Murphy and Meads all snapping at his heels. After a tense last few laps, Quinn held on to cross the line in third as 2016 Australian GT champion. What a way to finish the year and uh, it was like a 24 hour race, that one it had everything. Morkin, like he knew what to do and, and he was given 110%. I don't think there's a body panel left on the car that's not shaken and stirred and to be able to finish the year in the championship in that format, in that way, with that dicing is just what every championship wants and it's very special to have the family here and the team and the fans held out despite not the best weather conditions in the morning but it turned out fantastic, it's been a fantastic day and, and uh, it's just so special to be able to share that with everyone.